feeding that back in and making sure that our back office knows what the feedback from the customers is and working with the back office to make sure that it's, a, it's around the whole customer experience. One of the main attributes of implementation of a new customer access solution is the ability for our customers to be able to track progress. And that is one of the key things that we do believe is missing at the moment. Customer calls through to our contact centre. We will raise a case, we will raise a job. The terminology is that we use. It goes through to our back office and then it's about making sure that our front of house is connected with our back office services to enable the customer to track the progress of their, their call. And you know, you know yourself if you know the likes of Amazon and all of these online shopping, it's so easy to track where your parcel is, where, where your inquiry is. And that is something that I really do believe is achievable. It doesn't take away that we will have some of our, our less digital friendly customers who do need that support and moving forward it's really important that we make sure that we engage with our community groups, our constituent groups, our partners, volunteer groups to make sure that basically at the end of every road the support for our, our customers to be able to get that support from family, colleagues, <coughs> groups, kiosks in the area but there will always still remain that access to face to face which is really important for our emergencies our vulnerable customers. It, it, it's really important that as we move forward with channel shift, we don't lose <coughs> sight that it's not something that we want to push in the face of everybody and say, there's no other way to talk to the authority than online. That's not what my vision is, and that's not the vision that I've presented to Cabinet and SLT. So in summary, there's, there's a lot of work going on. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. I am confident that we've got some really, really good staff in the, in, in the council, in the transaction centre, and also in our support and services around to enable this change to happen. So, I don't think there's anything else I want to add, but I'm open to any questions. I'll do my best to answer, um, but anything that I can't answer, I'll take away and I'll make sure that I do come back with responses to those questions.
appreciative of the work that we're doing in the store in an iterative way. So I think it's sure a
most members uh, here will welcome the enthusiasm mm -hmm. and the changes that are going to be in place. I think um, this is an area that certainly we've been looking at. A lot of members have complained about it. And uh, the only question I have on the you said you can come back and uh, report on this on a monthly, three monthly basis. Just in terms of time scales to implement a lot of these things, have you got an idea of what those time scales are likely to be? Well, at the moment, obviously, there's, there's a lot of work underway. So we're trying to utilise people from the operation, but also we're dependent on support from the transformation office in the form of business analysts and, and consultants to support us doing this. Um, I really want to build that team so we stick with it, and, that, and that, that's, my, that's my wish. So I would like to say that over the next six months, these listed things will start to see happen. We've got some dependencies on IT, telephony, those kinds of things, but I don't believe we've got the hurdles that we can't get over. And what I will say is I'm not scared to make a noise if things aren't moving as us people and as us shout out. So um, I, I'm pretty much what you see is what you get. So if, if, if I think I need to make a noise about something, then I will if it means moving things forward. And I just think that is really important. But I really do believe that we can do this. I think around the time scale of the CRM, that's a little bit more difficult to get customer access solution as I prefer to call it, because I think sometimes CRM can come across as a big beast, and that's not what we need. We need something that's user-friendly. What I want my agents and our staff in the last ops to have in front of them is what our customers say. So if you phone me and you're struggling to go through a process, what you see on your screen is what the agents see in front of them. The live chat is, and, and the Google search, uh, we, the live chat is almost ready to go live November, so on the website, what you'll see is somebody pop up. If they see you're having trouble with an online form, they'll pop up and ask, can we help? And that's a pilot scheme. So that goes live in November. It's only a pilot, but I do believe that we'll get a lot of interest in that. The Google search, I didn't mention that, but that's made a massive impact to the search engine. Number of um, workshops that I went to and also um, presentations with people who have gone into partnership with joint venture companies and things like that and have gone into like a development partnership. And I was really taken aback by, you know, you put something in like husband left on the on the, the search engine and it automatically pulls up change of circumstances, single person discount. You know, those types of things. So for me the vision is about if a customer comes through to our our, our front door they don't see the many corridors that sit behind that front door. They'll put in what they need and they'll be dynamic enough to be able to, to look at what they need. So I always, it's not the most pleasant um, example, but if you lose somebody, there's so much involved in trying to manage that at such a stressful time. So if we can build a system that says, we can deal with your library cards, we can deal with your gym pass, we can deal with your, your appointment for, you know, registrars and all of those things that, that it, it's a spider that grows many, many legs. If we can accommodate that into one customer contact, imagine that just being the one thing that you have to, you have to do. And I speak to my experience, I always try to put myself in the customer's shoes because that's the shoes we need to walk in. So the, the, the customer access solution, a little bit further down the road for all the obvious reasons. We finished the soft market testing and um, so we're looking now to go to procurement. So that can take anything up to 12 to 18 months at best. So one of the presentations and particularly around our, our, our I class the back offices as my client. So just just as recently as meeting with yourself Mark, we talked about what we can do with our existing system to make sure that being as effective and as efficient as we can. We can't wait for a new system for that to happen. We've got to work with what we've got as best we can now. And then the new system is going to just add to that. Thank you, Jen. Can I just say that was one of the most positive, constructive, and uplifting reports we've had from offices in my time as a councillor. Thank you very much for doing that. That's, I'm not, you know, seriously, it sounded what 
we wanted to hear. Uh, my concern has been with the CRM system in general, but in the past I've been a councillor now 16 years, and I've always managed to have a first class relationship with the officers who I needed to get in touch with to sort out problems for me. The problem I found with the CRM system, it gives you a little bit sort of alternatives. You know, press this, press this, press the other. The, the questions I get from residents do not form into the most simplistic um, alternatives. They're normally very complicated and you really need to speak to an officer about it. Now I'm fortunate that there are a number of officers who are able to get on with very well and I thank them for that. An awful lot of them are in the highways that section. But we can't lose that connection because if it just goes into a black hole about a street deal or just a CRM report, it gets lost. Nothing comes back for a while. You try to chase it up and you get a very bland sort of statement once a week saying somebody's dealing with it. It doesn't say what they're doing and it doesn't say who's dealing with it. So I think we mustn't lose the personal touch that a lot of us have generated over the years with specific officers who we know can tune into what we really need them to do and are so constructive and positive in uh, dealing with the problems that we raise. So we mustn't rely on too much technical, logical ticker box and that's what the problem is because usually the problems we have to deal with are not simplistic. Mm -hmm. They are interconnected and we need something to talk about the impact of all of them. So hopefully you can take that into account when you're producing these systems that will make it make improvements to street scene and CRM uh, actions and reporting and so. But again, thanks very much for a very positive uh, presentation. And, and thank you for that. I think Toolkits to be able to deliver. So for me, it should be that your conversation with the person who's answering the phone, they've got the skill to be able to answer your question. They've got access to the systems that enable them to do that. And whilst it's always nice to have a go-to person, you shouldn't have to be reliant upon that go-to person. You need to make sure we don't take that away, but we also need to make sure that measures are in place that you get that answer from more than just one person. And I think that's important.
response to the tax savings, the, the tax savings, the savings, again, yeah, that doesn't really give how we best facilitate those savings. In response to the Act, yeah, it's a consideration. Have we got to a point where it's the finite detail on the specification for a new customer access solution? We'll actually need it tomorrow that uh, we're going through the specification line by line before we go to procurement on a customer access solution. So we're trying to keep as up to date as we can, whilst also keeping our hand in what we need to, to consider for our own local customers. Thank you. Thank you.
tell him what to do. <laughs> he will as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> is that it's it? Is that it, colleagues? Could you switch your microphone off, Lisa, please? Is, is that it? Lisa, I'd just, I'd just like to say, <laughs> the good and the bad from street scene. I, I spend a few hours a week in, in our local library in Bensby. And between May and June, I have four different elderly people come in who would had two terrible problems getting through. And our residents do exaggerate, I might add. You know, when they come in and say they've been 20 minutes on the phone, they might have been five, ten minutes on the phone. And it was all to do with signing up for, for the brown bin collection. And a couple of times I've had to reiterate what David said. Um, you know, when we've got people who we can we can ring up as councillors and we sort it out. And on two of the occasions, I rang straight through. And, and on the last two occasions, they came in, they said they'd be 20 minutes and they're asked to go from clip one, clip two, clip. And I thought I'd do it myself, I'd go through a phone street scene, which I did. And I was on the phone in both instances for five minutes. Five minutes. And I've got to commend the, the officers in the street scene. And they're at the shop end and they do a fantastic job. I asked them, these were elderly people, would they phone them back and sort out the brown bin collection? And on both occasions, within a couple of days, both people came back into the library to thank me. Because the officers in street scene had not only run, run them back and they, they sorted the bin collection out and they only charged them, on, on all four occasions, they only charged the elderly residents £35 and not the £40. So I'd, I'd like to finish on that and I'd like to commend the work that street scene do when we can get through to it. And the work, and the work that you're, you're trying to do, and I think I think we will solve it. And if you can work with people, I mean, I'm a I'm, I'm a dinosaur when it comes to IT. I, I openly admit. But if you work with people like Steve, there, Steve Williams, Phil Bradmore, there, you know, with ideas that they've got to make it easier for all of us, and, and that's what that's what we're after. We're all working together to make it easier for all of us in this room so we can help the residents and that's what we all want. And thanks for the great report, Lisa. Thank you, and Julie. Thanks very much. Thanks. 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 Well, uh, this was just an... This, this report is just an audit.
So a brief summary of some of those uh, other key changes. The command priority will look at the whole staffing issue and whether they need to employ staff directly to make this happen. You'll be aware that up until now, in the last year or 18 months, really a lot of the work has been done by constituent officers across the patch. Um, it's a question of whether we need additional testing out to do that. And so, should the command priority be employed those staff directly? Broadly, the command priority will agree that principle. Combined priorities will look at questionable balances for the elected mayor, the new elected mayor, and the new um, elected members. Broadly, though, we think that will be described by government largely, and we know there's a political commitment across the city which is going to kind of make the whole combined priority as efficient as possible and not generating a whole layer of new bureaucracy and new finance. Uh, again, more detail about the emerging next few months. Scrutiny, as I said, particular interest.
really nothing to add other than to say that um, it's such a it's it's a it's a fluid it's a it's a fluid situation, and we're meeting again. What date are we meeting? Fairly soon, anyway, to, to the 19th of October, we're meeting to um, to formulate what we're going to scrutinise next, which is business. We're looking at business, but I think it's fair to say, Dave, that it's such a fluent situation, this and a fluent situation, that we're going to, we're going back to, to government, the, the six the six bodies, and the government. On a, on a daily basis, the government are telling us what they expect, what, what they expect us to implement. So, again, on a, on a, as Rosemary said, on a daily basis, we're formulating the ideas. But nothing is being ruled in or ruled out. You said about, about the Lib Dems um, putting forward a strong recommendation about scrutiny. That's all being looked at, and, and it is. I, I met last week in, in, um, in Witness with the chair of scrutiny and, and the lead officer and the vice chair to look at various aspects of, of, of what we're going to do in the, in the forthcoming year. But it's 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 like the the donkey's not being led, it's being pushed. So I don't know, I might use the wrong metaphor there, you a donkey, maybe a no, I prize, quite maybe sad. a prize <laughs> race horse would be would be better. <laughs> But we're trying our best to keep to keep the, the council here on board and this committee in particular and the other committees um, informed as we go along. But it's nothing's happening until it actually happens. Just say what's it's fair to say. Yeah. We we've had we know at least we know now who the, the mayoral candidate's gonna be from our party. We're still waiting for, for the other two parties to put nominations forward. Which might help. It might help the general well, public out there for the new candidates. My view is, my point is that uh, quite often, and I'll say this because we had training the other week on, in relation to all this, the overview of scrutiny. My, one of my points that I put forward on the evening was that we have to look at other authorities' websites to find out what's going on in the city region. We should be able to look at Wirral's website to find out what's going on in the city. Okay, well, I think, I think really that's a point for Rosemary, and you, you could have made when Rosemary was it. But if you could make a note of that, Rosemary, please. But well, you're saying it's fluid. How do we know if we don't go to know? Well, I'm just oh, telling you what I know as vice chair of the committee, yeah. Dave. Yeah. But Rosemary's made a note of that, and, um, and we'll, we'll try and improve on that, Rosemary. Thank you. Okay, well, again, that's, that's for noting, if that's okay with the committee. We move on now to item eight. We'll plan over view report, and, and we've got Alan here. Alan, Alan. Thanks, Chair. Um, just to introduce myself to the members of the committee. My new role 